Today we are taking a tour of Meridian, Idaho with Jordan Wittenberg and we are excited to, yeah, I'm excited for you to give us a tour, Jordan. Thank you so much for uh, being on the channel today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love talking about Idaho and Meridian's probably my favorite city here in the valley. So I'm looking forward to sharing uh, my experience here and hopefully helping out your audience with uh, people looking into the area too. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. And what, so to give some context, um, how long have you been living in the area for? Uh, and spent four years in Oregon for college, uh, spent some time in Eugene and Portland area, but um, really have kind of found home here in, uh, in the Boise, Idaho area. And uh, my family was able to buy a home in Meridian and we just love it for uh, raising a family. I think that's a big thing that, that we'll talk about today. Um, a lot of young families are moving this direction. So uh, being in Meridian, it's it's a really great place to raise a family and kind of has something for everybody. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to let's dive into the map. So here we are in relation to like the bigger picture. Um, OK, so here we have the Meridian area. Yeah. Um, yeah. Walk us through a little bit of the town. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, it's really centrally located to the whole Treasure Valley. So, but the parts of the city are pretty distinct. Like you have a, a really a north, central, and a south. And uh, our office here in the village, that's kind of the center of everything in terms of uh, social, uh, social get togethers. A lot of times you have shopping and entertainment here at the village. Uh, has a really cool fountain square that's a, a big hit with the kids and and they do these like water shows every hour um, and light shows that the guy who actually put together the Bellagio fountains in Vegas if you've seen those fountain shows yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. yeah he created this here and so every hour they do like music and uh, light shows and it's a pretty cool thing and our office is just overlooking yes. it so that's Here. that's like in this in this area. Yeah, that's right there at the village and uh, the Fountain Square, uh, right across from Kleiner Park. There, so you have the central, you know, central part of the city. Everything off of Eagle Road. That's the busiest road in the state because there's just so much along Eagle Road. You have all the shopping, restaurants. Uh, you have hospitals. Uh, St. Luke's is the uh, biggest hospital here in the area, and kind of everything you need is all along Eagle Road, and then and that's the central part. Eagle, Eagle Road is, mm -hmm. could, could you um, highlight that with the map, or sorry, with the mouse? Yeah, so you got Fairview and Albertsons there, and then uh, just uh, just right there at Albertsons and Fairview Pavilion, you got, oh, well, the, the map's kind of throwing me a little bit. So you got Meridian Road, Eustick, and then, uh, and then right here, this is uh, this main yellow road right down the middle. That's Eagle Road. It, it might be marked as a highway in there. This one? Like 55, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So it just runs through the whole, pretty much like through the city. Right. Yeah, it runs through the city and then it connects all, all the way to uh, the freeway, South Meridian, uh, where they got a ton of, uh, I, I mean, I could go, I could go on about each part of the city, but you know, each, each one has something kind of unique to it. So, so if you go, I'll just, I'll just talk about that. So C Central Meridian, kind of all the action as far as uh, entertainment, uh, social gatherings. You got one of the premier parks in the valley in Kleiner Park, right across from the village. They got beautiful ponds and walking trails. Obviously the, the normal stuff like playgrounds and they got basketball courts. And then they have a disc golf course. Um, Frisbee golf is really popular around here. Like all through the city, there's about 20 parks city parks all over meridian so really? that's yeah i mean outdoor recreation is is huge up here um you know you're not far from the boise foothills where you got mountain biking and hiking and all kinds of stuff to do there um but in the parks around meridian you got you know the ponds you got people fishing in the ponds um Take you know, what, kids running around yeah what's what's a park that you like uh we can zoom in on a park yeah Kleiner is one of my favorite right across from the village I'll usually at, you know I'll take lunch and go for a walk around the pond there um Kleiners, which well, is yeah right across the street from the village okay. nice uh, yeah it's huge it's like 58 acres it's like massive uh, all kinds of meeting areas there's an amphitheater there yeah it's there's... like shopping and 
even yes yeah, right across from from all the shopping mm -hmm. and everything and there's a lot of community events that they hold there as well excellent um and then that's probably my one of my favorite my favorites probably settlers park so if you zoom out a little bit yeah settlers park is probably like the best park i've ever seen i was just there this morning with my daughter um, so it's more towards um like you stick off of you stick there uh -huh. and meridian road yeah there you go that's it yeah so you see all the baseball fields yeah and then just a ton of open green like green space yeah. um so you have flag football practices going you got soccer you got volleyball and a lot of times in the summer and, and spring especially the, all these sports are going at the same time so uh it's and it's so much space um it's right by a pond and and people fish in there but then you got tennis courts pickleball courts yeah. uh, pickleball is really big up here um, they have like the national tournament uh, across the country they hosted it here last summer oh, hey. and then uh and then they got all these cornhole uh courts right right along oh there. is this this yeah what so, and it's like state of the art it's like um brand new uh really nice they got cornhole leagues here and oh, cool. you know, i was always playing basketball city league but now i'm starting to think this cornhole might be my future with yeah. how my ankles are feeling these days cool and it's fun yeah i mean you get a little partner and 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 play some cornhole yeah. it's a good, a good time throwing the bean bags cool and then the pickle pickleball and then yeah pickleball courts right tennis here. courts um, you got a massive playground and then uh, like i said i took my daughter this morning and uh this weekend uh and she just likes to run around the splash pad there mm. so they got this water just dumping from the buckets and shooting everywhere and they were actually having a little ymca summer camp there today too so they just there's so much stuff to do there that they just take the kids there and let them free for all and have fun. So yeah. nice. awesome place. They, the, oh, the other thing about Settlers Park in the summer is they'll have uh, this gelati stand. So they'll got, they're selling like shaved ice and gelati, mm. Italian gelati. And it's really, really good, uh, especially on a hot day. Like we've been having some hot days this summer. Right, right. Yeah, so at the time of this recording, this is in late July. Um, so is this unusual to have weather that's hot in the area? I mean, this is a little bit hotter than it is traditionally here. Um, most summers it's, it's a dry heat in the low nineties. Um, July is the hottest month and August isn't far behind, but yeah, I mean, you're, you know, the summers that are, you know, one thing that sets it apart is that it's not really humid. It's really rare to get humid weather here. So to me, you know, being initially from California, you know the the heat really doesn't bother me i like you know 90s uh in the summertime feels pretty good <laughs> but you know recently it's just been a little bit of a heat wave um that we have been experiencing not only here but i've seen across the country where it's been uh more higher 90s and up into the hundreds a few days um, but it really doesn't get at its peak heat till later in the day like five or six o'clock which is uh, something i'm not used to um, I know in, in California, I remember it being mostly like two o'clock or closer to three. It'd be the hottest part of the day. Yep. But um, but yeah, it's it's been hot, but it it's really not that bad. I I mean, 90s in the summer, I'll take it. You know, I'm not going to complain about that. And yeah. and with the fall and spring being a little more brisk, um, you know, we welcome that warm weather for sure. Yes, yes. And it, so it looks like there's also like small little like streams or rivers going through like the city or? Yeah, a lot of, those are irrigation canals. Um, a lot of canals all through the city. Um, you're also, if if you're up in North Meridian, uh, the Boise River is right there. And that's one of my favorite things to do in the area is just walk along the Boise River. It's called the Greenbelt Trail up here. So it stretches like 25 miles all through Boise and Meridian goes into Eagle and Star, and it's, you know, um, a, a big popular place for recreation. Yeah. Is it this uh, or? Yeah, it goes all through Eagle. Um, I don't see it labeled there on the map. It's going to be definitely the, the, okay, so if you see Banbury Golf, that's a, that's an Eagle. It's just a little bit further down Eagle Road. So if you look, see at Reed Merrill Park there, up near Eagle, that's, that's the river. So it goes through Eagle Island State Park, um, 
That's another really fun spot. We had my daughter's birthday party. They have a beach there. A lot of people think Idaho, oh, you don't have a beach or, you know, now it's not the ocean, but it's basically this whole beach area where the kids can play in the water and uh, paddleboard and kayak and all kind of fun stuff. So uh, the green belt is a huge part of this culture around Treasure Valley, um, all, all through the Boise area. Um, rivers and, and mountains and, and all this creeks, that's huge up here in Idaho. You know, we don't have the ocean. We're not far from it, but if you like uh, that outdoor recreation, going up to lakes and, and hanging by the river, all that's here. I think there's more rivers and lakes than any state in the country uh, here in Idaho, last I checked. Wow. So. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that has pretty big impact on like the culture and how even just living, like how people are, um, you know, recreation, things like that for, so it's like pretty easy, like to just go up to the, um, to this part of, sorry, my words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, what does it oh, look okay. like? What does it look like if I wanted to like, you know, come up here to the beach um, for the day, you know? Yeah, I mean, so it's a state park, Eagle Island State Park. It's just over the border of Meridian on the north part of the city. And that's where my family lives in North Meridian. We like that proximity to Eagle and, and Star, which is a little bit more rural and, and quiet, even though they're growing like crazy. Um, you, you got that proximity to the river. And then, you know, if you have a state park pass, I think you pay 20 bucks for the year and you get a sticker on your car and you can go to any state park in Idaho. And, you know, rather than paying seven bucks a day to park, you just get that sticker on your car and they have a disc golf course there. They got the beach area. Yeah, you know, it's it's right off. Um, it's right off of uh, 44 there. So it's really uh, easy to get to um, from Meridian, you know, it's 10 minutes. And then, you know, it's this whole, it's like its own, um, it, it's a little unique compared to other parks. Like in, in the winter, they do these uh, snow tubing. They convert it to uh, a whole uh, like snow hill and you can go, you go tubing down it and it's super fun. Um, and then in the summer, they have a water slide there. So they got water slides right next to the the beach and the river, and and so they kind of depending on the time of year they they tune it up, uh, nice. you know, to be to be ready to go for the people. That sounds amazing. Uh, that's uh, especially if you're a kid. Yeah, it sounds very family friendly. Uh, totally. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, you said it. Like family friendly uh, is really the best way I would describe Meridian, and it's very clean here. Um, that was one of the first things my grandma said, who lived in California her whole life, driving the freeways here. She said, it is so clean here. And she has an appreciation for cleanliness. Mm. She's a very neat lady. And she said, this is kind of what California used to look like uh, oh. in the 80s or, you know, a long time ago. We're just like, oh. the freeways are clean. Like, it's right. just, you know, in general, you go around to the parks and the streets and it's just uh, has a nice feel to it. Right, right. Oh, that's, that's uh words of wisdom right there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's like seeing it change like the history. Um, right. that's super interesting. Uh, well, I'm, I'm all for, yeah, living in a clean, clean place and stuff. So I know, um, you know, different cultures, they, they value really very much. So, um, the cleanliness of, of the cities and stuff like places like Singapore, um, or, yeah. or, or Japan, things like that. So very cool. Um, could you dive into the schools a little bit like around the area? Yeah, I mean, the schools are great up here and hitting on our point before about family friendly, a lot of young families here and a, a big reason people are moving uh, is the schools are just really highly rated and you can get, go on all kinds of websites to verify that great schools um, mm -hmm. dot com or dot org, um, I think is a great resource for that. And then uh, you know, school districts are great. You got a variety of, of really highly rated public schools, a lot of charter school options. Um, oh, cool. You guys have, you guys charter school options here. Charter schools. Yeah. A lot of private schools. And um, so there's a, a wide variety of choice there, you know, in terms of, you know, the higher education you have Boise state is the biggest college uh, close by, um, you know, no more than 15 minutes here from Meridian. And, and then, basically any 
Any city with more than 20,000 people has a college or university in the state. But uh, here in the Treasure Valley, this Boise metro area, you have Boise State, you have uh, Northwest Nazarene, which is a Division II school, you had College of Idaho, uh, smaller NAI school. Those were both schools I played against in college. Um, I was going to school in Oregon. And so smaller colleges, um, more of a private feel, and then you have uh, then you have College of Western Idaho, which is a, a massive community college here where there's a lot of training for a lot of health and science professions. That's big in this area with the amount of uh, healthcare facilities and hospitals. Um, so health and science is huge around here. You got St. Luke's, you got St. Alphonsus, primary health, um, a lot of specialty um, type healthcare. Um, and so the schools here are um, they're, you know, designed to prepare people for the workplace. And this economy is really booming up here. And it's mm -hmm. a big reason a lot of people are moving here is not just uh, the positive economic trends, mm -hmm. um, family friendly style uh, activities and outdoor recreation. But you have uh, really high quality schools uh, for the kids from from the college level all the way down uh, to having a lot, a lot of options around, you know, elementary school age, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, if you're raising a family, it's it's super important. Um, where yeah. your where where your children are studying, what they're totally. learning, what they're well, learning. Well, and then you have yeah. uh, you know a lot of homeschool options, like hybrid co-op options. That, that's really popular with parents here too. So it's kind of whatever you're looking for. Um, there's something for it around Meridian. That would be interesting. A hybrid option. Um, yeah. Theoretically, theoretically, if I had kids, um, I'd be like, yeah, like go to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays and come back and we can do other stuff. Um, yeah, super interesting. Let's talk about Jordan. Can you tell us a little, little bit more about the weather in the Meridian, Idaho area? Yeah, the weather. There's really four true seasons up here. Um, you have uh, a distinct difference between each one. So I, we talked about the summer a little bit where you have traditionally low 90s and it's a dry heat it's not humid so you're not like walking out the door and it's slapping you in the face type of heat and you're already sweating um, so the summers are great um, we have seen the last couple summers a little bit warmer than uh, than typical seasons but i think that's kind of been nationwide uh, the winters here it, it depends what part of the state you're in so if you're in northern idaho or central idaho that snow is going to be heavy and it's going to be really cold. Uh, but here in the Boise area, we're in the southwest part of the state. It's a more uh, dry climate in general. So, you know, you're talking about low 40s, high 30s. Um, you put a hoodie on and a beanie, like it's really not that bad. Um, the snow also sets in the foothills. Uh, you, you only get a little bit of snow, maybe 10 days out of the winter, it'll snow, but it really doesn't stick to the roads. Um, it, it, it's gone quick um, and it mostly sets in the foothills. So it's really just pretty to look at. It's mostly just setting in the, in the foothills and mountains and, and then you're going about your day, uh, you know, in the streets. Um, spring and fall are absolutely gorgeous. Um, a little bit more brisk than maybe traditional like winters i mean i mean uh, spring or fall you're talking mostly 60 maybe mid 60s low 70s and fall is gorgeous here um, the leaves all turn all the trees in the streets turn and it's really pretty and and then spring is my favorite season because you got everything coming back green and a lot of these communities have just gorgeous landscaping and, and flowers and they're really well taken care of so so uh, spring and fall are beautiful. Um, summer's hot, um, but it's not that hot. You know, I think most people can handle low into mid nineties and, and dry heat. And then the winters are really not bad at all. Um, it just feels like it might be a little longer than it is, especially if you're coming from a more warm climate. If you're from California, it's tough to beat LA weather, San Diego and, and the Bay area. That, I mean, you're talking about some of the best weather in the world. So if you're comparing that to Idaho, it, it's going to feel a little colder. Um, so that's not really a fair comparison. That's that's just like you had it as good as it as it gets. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the it'll rain. Uh, I think we have I, I looked this up. So, yeah, 211 days of the year, it's sunny here. So you got over 200 days of sunshine. So I like that. 
Um, the spring, the one thing I'll say about the spring is that it, it'll kind of play with you a little bit. Like you're thinking, oh, it's going to be warm now. And then it'll, it's like, it fakes you out. Um, even going into summer, it's like, it's, you got some rain, then, then you got some, it's like gorgeous when it's, when it's beautiful, it's tough to beat. It's just beautiful here. Um, and then you'll have like clouds roll through and they're here, you know, for 20 minutes, maybe. So people say around here, like, if you're not happy with the weather, just wait 15 minutes. So the idea is it's, it's just changing so quickly. And, uh, and that's been my experience mostly in the spring. So just dress for, you know, have a layer, you know, have a t-shirt and then have a, you know, have a couple layers ready because it can be a little bit unpredictable in, in the spring, especially, but overall four true seasons and just dress for a, a couple different occasions most of the year. For, um, so we're, we've been touching a little bit on Meridian, Idaho, like um, for the culture, how would, how would you describe the culture? Yeah. I mean, the culture is unique in that it's kind of like when, when I think about when people were immigrating to America to begin with, everyone was coming here for a, a better life. Right. Mm. And then, and now it's like almost a subset of American culture here where people are migrating from different parts of the country for a better quality of life here around Meridian and the Boise area. So you have um, a lot of people, um, you look at California and Washington, uh, Oregon, those are, you know, the, the coastal states here on the West Coast are, uh, you know, a big part of this culture here, really. It's just people who are looking for maybe more traditional values um, that, or they're not happy the direction things are going in other states. Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of like-minded people that are kind of just like, you know, like we got kids playing in the streets, you know, and, and riding their bikes and, and parents aren't worried about them. It's, it's safe here. It's um, really, really low crime. And it's kind of like the old days almost. Like I remember doing that as a kid in, in California. And I think now if I was a kid, my parents might think twice, uh, depending on the neighborhood you're in. Um, so, so I think you have, um, you have a really unique mix of, of people who just kind of want to live their lives, have their freedom, you know, constitution is big up here. Um, hmm. you know, they want their freedom of speech and their freedom to bear arms. And these are, you know, just these old American values that, um, people in the, in the treasure Valley really appreciate. And they want to have freedom in how they raise their kids and what goes in their body with schools. And, and there's a lot of freedom to uh, to do that around here. And that's a big reason people have migrated here at such a high, high rate. I think it's five years running now. You have more people moving to Idaho uh, than any other state in the country. And there's something really appealing about that, uh, that lifestyle, freedom based lifestyle to, you know, pursue what you want to do and, and raise your kids how you want to raise them. And, and then enjoy all the beautiful nature uh, mm -hmm. and an outdoor rec that that you have to do. There's so many things to do up here, and it, it really spans not just across uh, young families, but people come here to retire and people come here to build their careers. Um, you got a, a booming tech scene. You got a you know great rural areas where you can enjoy the country and, and the views and kind of settle down with acreage. And then you have you know Meridian is more. Um, you know, up and coming mixed with more established neighborhoods. So you have kind of a, they're trying to keep up with all the growth. Um, hmm. Kind of like the word got out that this is a really great place to live. And so everyone kind of rushed and, and came here um, in droves <laughs> from everywhere. Which, okay, let, let's talk about that. The, the elephant in the room, which is, um, yeah, people are moving there. I know quite a bit of people from California are moving there. Um, what, what does that look like uh, for Californians moving to Idaho? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been really great. I think there's a stereotype going around about that, that Idahoans hate Californians. And, and I, I can speak to that not being true. Um, That's right. It's not true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, it kind of depends um, what you're bringing to the table. Like if you want to come up here and drive 60 and a 40 and be cutting people off, you know, people might say, hey, you know, Let's not, let's keep that in California, you know, mm. but, you know, if you can come up here and, and what draws people here is a, a little bit slower pace of life. People are very friendly here. I'm mm. um, not to say they're not in California. It might just depend where you are. Mm. Um, but 
Uh, you don't feel that tension, uh, that day to day, like hustle and bustle, like, you know, trying to get through the commute and, and you know, just like backed up traffic like crazy. Hmm. Um, so, so I think that, you know, the more people I've talked to up here, it's almost, it's almost more rare to find somebody who is a local, who is from here originally, um, whether they moved here 10 years ago or three years ago or 20 years ago, for the most part, a major portion of this population here has moved from either California or Washington or another state. Uh, Utah is a big one too. Um, and so I really found- from, from Utah. Yeah, a lot from Utah. A lot of people are moving into Utah, like, right, but right. a lot of people have moved here to Idaho from Utah as well. Like, uh, from, like from the Salt Lake area or just from- Salt Lake, yeah, Provo. And and it's not as a higher rate as, as the coastal states, but there are quite a few from Utah. And and so, you know, I, from- I could, I could see, because it's not very far, like from where, from, from right. Salt Lake. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's about a four hour drive. Yeah. Uh, to Salt Lake, so it's not far, and it might just be uh, like a job thing, like they just take a different job here too. Right. Um, but you know, my neighbors from Sacramento, my two doors down Orange County, three doors down San Diego. Mm -hmm. So we go hang out at the end of the, you know, on Saturdays. One of our neighbors just opens up their garage, big RV garage, and they just have all the kids in the neighborhood running around, hanging out, barbecue. Um, and, and we all just kind of, they're all riding their bikes around, throwing water balloons at each other. And it's kind of just like a nice community feel. And, and what we have in common is that we, we moved from another place, um, to, you know, find a better quality of life, uh, right. here in the treasure Valley. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, that sounds definitely like quality of life to me. Um, like talking or hanging out with your neighbors and enjoying one another yeah. and, that's amazing. Um, for okay, you keep, you keep saying that treasure treasure coat or what is it treasure? Oh, so like the Boise metro area. This is it's called the Treasure Valley. Treasure Valley. Yeah, there was a lot of like mining here way back in the day. Uh, a lot of people came here like the gold rush days. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of uh, precious gems, um, star garnet, all kind of different gems through this valley that. Uh, it initially got its name because there was a lot of mining to be done around here. Got it. But it it kind of speaks to uh, the whole Boise metro area. So Meridian's the central hub now and has grown like crazy. Uh, and then you have uh, Star and Middleton to the north uh, with Eagle. And then you have Nampa and Caldwell um, just to the west, um, two bigger cities here, and then Boise to the east uh, and Cuna to the south. So Meridian's just like central to all of these other um, main cities throughout the treasure valley got it excellent excellent yeah and that's something i feel like if you're a local or you know once you only know, know those things until you kind of like talk to someone from there um because it's very very specific um tre treasure valley correct yeah yeah treasure okay. valley okay cool and then um so treasure valley area seems really awesome um meridian seems even better but let's kind of dive into the cost of living. So yeah. uh, if, if someone's thinking about purchasing a house, moving to the area, um, yeah, what's like kind of the, the medium kind of price for that? Yeah, that's that's been rising rapidly. Um, and that was a big draw when, when my family initially moved up here was just be, to be able to get in at a fraction of the cost of what it might cost to you know buy a home in California. So now it, it's still a fraction, but it's a little bit bigger fraction. Um, you know, I mean, especially the last two years, um, home prices have risen nationally about 25%. And so what you were able to afford two years ago isn't the same today. And, and also, you know, a big thing we're running into is interest rates rising. So people can't qualify for as much to borrow. And the interesting part is that's that may have cooled pr home prices off a little bit in terms of appreciation, but home prices, especially here around the Boise area, because uh, of the influx of growth, um, and we we didn't have enough houses around here to sell to the amount of people that wanted to buy, and so homes have risen in value far uh, far greater than the the national average. Um, I mean, we're talking north of forty percent appreciation in just the last couple of years. So it, it, that's it really insane. is. That's insane. Yeah, and it, yeah. it is. And, and yeah. it's great news for homeowners, uh, yeah. you know, so 
especially if you owned something a couple years ago and, and you've seen your home value skyrocket. Um, but if you're a first time buyer looking to get in, it's, it's a lot tougher now. Um, mm -hmm. What I would say is, um, you know, the thing with, with buying a home, uh, you, you asked about the median price. Yes, and, yes, yes. And if you were to ask me that in 2019, 2020, now you're in like the low 300 range, maybe for a median home, home price. And then if you were to ask me today or in Meridian, you're in the mid to high five range. Uh, so maybe 570 uh, is, a, is a median home price in Meridian now. So, I mean, that's a massive uh, amount of, of growth in, in such a short amount of time. Yeah. But we're still seeing um, homes are still appreciating up here. Um, it's just going to be at a decelerated rate. It, it, it was never sustainable uh, to, to, you know, they can't keep rising at that rate. Right. But um, because people still want to move here um, and builders are trying to keep up with uh, a low inventory, uh, the value is still there. Right. So um, that's also affected rental rates at a big rate, you know, so uh, for an example, when we moved to Boise, we got a nice little two bedroom apartment. Uh, nothing special, two bedroom, one bath, um, just while, while our home was being uh, built in Meridian, we, we got a new build and we were waiting for it to be completed. And it was fifteen fifty a month to, to live there. Really good location, close to downtown, got to know the whole Boise area really well. Yeah. And, and we moved out about six months later. And then my parents moved up here uh, within the year. And we were looking at a place for them to rent while their home was being built uh, in Star. And that same apartment was renting for $2,400 wow. um, by the time they were looking to rent. So I think across the valley, we looked at, we saw rental rates since like the early 2020 rise 40%. Hmm. So it's really tough to rent. It, you know, you can talk about it being tough to buy, but it's tough to rent too. Um, you know, the thing with buying is you lock your rate and, and you lock your payment and that's what it is for however long the loan is. But if you rent, you know, now it can be fluctuating with mm -hmm. the market and inflation. So mm -hmm. I always, I encourage people to buy if they can, um, even though it's difficult, there are, you know, there's ways around it. If you can only bring three and a half percent down, you know, get an FHA loan. My last deal was an FHA. Uh, the 20 percent down is a lot of money and most people don't have that just sitting around so i think that's a big deterrent to why people don't get in but you know you can get in on a primary home on a conventional loan at five percent down so if you can somehow scrounge together five percent or even three and a half percent um, it may be a little more difficult for your offer to stand out um, if you're going up against a cash buyer or 20 percent down but it's not impossible. And when I look at rent prices, um, I look at them as you're paying 100% interest and you're going to pay, you know, you could say interest rates are five and a half percent. I can't do that. Well, you're building your own equity, you know, as opposed to building somebody else's. So people look at, do I rent? Do I buy? Some people don't have the option to buy, but if you can try to do it because yeah. you're either going to be paying your mortgage down or you're going to be paying somebody else's mortgage down. So. Yeah. I encourage yeah. people to build their own equity and, and build their own wealth rather than their landlords. Yep. No, absolutely. For I, I'm curious for new builds like in, in that area, what's what's like the timeline on that typically? Is it like a year or a year and a half, two years? Yeah, it, it totally depends on the builder. Uh, the production builders that you have around here like CBH or Hubble Homes, they can knock homes out within six months. Um, as long as they're not hitting supply chain issues or, you know, that's been a big, a big thing the last few years, um, supply chain, labor shortage, cost of materials has risen a lot. So builders have been really busy, but they've also had a ton of unique challenges up here. Um, you have Toll Brothers, which is a big uh, national builder. They're up here big in this area um, and their builds take a little bit longer, um, closer, maybe 14 months, year and a half range, uh, because you can customize those. And so there's a few more, uh, a few more aspects involved in that design process. Sure. And then you have uh, fully custom builders up here um, that I was working with here on a team for about eight months prior to um, doing my own, uh, going solo in my real estate business. 
And they're seeing uh, times more like a year and a half, two years uh, potentially um, mm -hmm. for the bigger builds and, and the custom where the builders are really working closely with the clients and you know mm -hmm. basically getting it exactly how they want it. So those are just a little more time intensive. Um, but if you buy a spec home, which is like where you're not customizing it, the builder already has it uh, you know, selected to how they're gonna build it. And you just say, hey, I like what you did. I'll take that one. Um, those, you know, you can get in with a builder, be like, Hey, they'll tell you this, this one will be ready in August. This one will be ready in December. Hmm. And then you can kind of just, you know, work your timeline, um, you know, to, to when the home will be finished. But especially in the last two years, if you, to me, if you can get in early on a new build, that's the smartest thing you can do because hmm. now you can lock today's price. And then by the time it's finished, the majority of the time people have a lot of equity already built in because of the rate the market's appreciating so you, yes. you're not even making a payment on it um and you have built-in equity by the time you move in that's so yeah that that's that's different um we're like you know you're like wow we've appreciated like five percent already um yeah and that's more <laughs> realistic i think if you were to get in now you might see a few percentage points but we were seeing like you know, the last two years that when the whole market goes up 40%, which is unheard of historically, mm -hmm. I mean, people are moving into their house with 50, 60 grand in equity and they mm -hmm. haven't even made a payment yet. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just like a, the gold rush getting up here and yes. people trying to strike while the iron was hot. Yeah, 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 absolutely. For, um, so before people move somewhere, I always recommend, you know, go visit and stuff. Um, stay at an airbnb hotel uh where should we stay in town uh if we're looking to just like visit for maybe like a, a long weekend yeah well you can stay at my airbnb i have a rental property up here oh there um, we go we'll put the link <laughs> in the description <laughs> there you go so so we got that uh, right near downtown meridian a little three bed two bath a uh, single level but uh if i were to recommend if you want to stay at a hotel and, and get a real feel for um the the area the Riverside Hotel in Boise is awesome just because it's right along the river there and uh, they have a really nice pool area and, and you're basically walking distance to everything in downtown Boise, hmm. which is really great. Um, I think when you, especially when you look at more major cities, those, those cities tend to be not as clean. And I think people notice that about downtown Boise. It's like, um, I've heard comparisons to downtown Sacramento a little bit. Um, but it also, but it's just clean in general. And so if you can stay around there, um, the Grove Hotel is, a, is another really good one. Um, my my in-laws like staying at, uh, it's called the Inn at, uh, uh, what's it called? The Inn at 500. Uh, it's, it's right by Chandler's Steakhouse, a really, really high level hotel. Um, so, so, you know, I think you're totally on point with like, before you decide to move, you got to get a feel for the area. So, so come see it, come visit, um, stay at, you know, stay at an Airbnb. Um, and, and if you can get close to the river somewhere, I, I like doing that too. Um, there's a Hilton also right along the river on the Eagle side, uh, right by a restaurant called Bardenay. That's really nice. So I'm a big fan of the Boise river in general. So mm -hmm. if you can stay close to that, that kind of just runs through the whole city and, uh, and but definitely come come check it out yeah no that 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 was perfect that answers my question because um you know when you go somewhere you're always like there's a lot of places to say it's like do i stay here on the left on the east and the west the north like i don't know um so that's perfect yeah. so if you were to stay on on the north side in boise there's a lot of like history there there's a, there's the historical district you have these old streets there's a street called harrison that has these like hundred year old homes that um, are just super, they're just gorgeous. And they've, a lot of them have been remodeled on the inside, but um, yeah, Hyde Park, Camel's Back Park, you can go on little hikes uh, up above, uh, you know, get a, a view of the valley. Um, and and it's called the City of Trees is, I know we're, we're on Meridian, but Boise borders it. and. And one thing that really stands out about Meridian and, and the Boise area in general is the amount of trees. You'll see a lot of tree-lined streets, um, a lot of community pools and things like that, but there's a ton of trees here. Excellent. And so it makes for, uh, especially when fall rolls around, it's Ooh. just gorgeous out uh, with all the trees turning colors. And um, yeah, a lot of trees around, around Boise for sure.
Awesome. I'm I'm a big I'm a I'm a tree person. I'm a fan. Um, yeah. <laughs> whenever someone cuts down a tree, I ask them, "What did the tree do to you?" Um, but now <laughs> I'm like defending the right. tree. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh, they keep they're mostly growing up here. They're they're still alive. Okay, cool. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about the the local economy. So in uh, the treasure treasure cove area correct <laughs> treasure valley Tre- treasure valley Gosh, you can call it, it the cove treasure valley there's probably a cove somewhere in the river yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah dive into the local economy uh for the boise idaho uh, treasure cove area <laughs> yeah it's booming i mean you talk about uh health opportunities with st luke st alphonsus major hospitals um health and science is huge in the area you have Micron, which is one of the biggest tech companies in the world. A lot of people from Silicon Valley have transferred to work up here. Uh, the headquarters is here in Boise. Um, so they're they're big on, uh, you know, they create semiconductors and export them. It's one of the biggest exports in the company. And, and they create like com- computer chips and stuff, high tech stuff. Yeah. So uh, that's a that's a huge, uh, a massive employer here in the state is Micron. And it's it's headquartered here. You have the corporate headquarters for Albertsons, a big grocery store chain. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's right here. Uh, the, the founders went to College of Idaho nice. uh, in Caldwell. So uh, when I played basketball uh, against College of Idaho, they were called Albertsons College of Idaho. So they had like Albertsons across their jerseys back then. Uh, but yeah, Al- Albertsons grocery stores is huge up here. Um, you have uh, Costco and Winco. These are all right in North Meridian. Um, brand new so they employ a lot of people um so you have a variety of corporate headquarters um and then just in general you know idaho is is kind of known from the government standpoint as like like fiscal fiscally conservative and there's been a massive budget surplus i think about 1.7 billion dollars um, they just announced this week so they're reallocating that to a lot of the education here around here a lot of uh, they gave teachers i think a 10 percent raise Nice. Um, it's a lot of the money is going back into community colleges and just, um, you know, trying to keep up with the growth around here. They're reinvesting it. Yeah. Reinvesting it into the schools primarily. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. yeah. So, so a lot of opportunity, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, home builders up here. So, so real estate is big. Uh, I work in as an agent. So a lot of people moving here, um, I'm helping them find homes, but there's a lot of uh, money in new construction as well. Um, so uh, economically, yeah, the state's doing really, really well. And it's it's been a, a big reason people have been drawn to here. When you combine cost of living, which even though it's rising, it's still, you know, nationally, um, it's still with, with the amount of opportunities around here um, that can offset. And especially in the rise in remote work, uh, people can work remotely and enjoy the, you know, the amenities of this area. That's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like sounds like the American dream. Um, it's not. <laughs> it is. It is alive and well. It is. Uh, it is alive and well in Meridian, Idaho. Yeah. But I, you know, eventually we'll have to talk about some cons, and I'll let you yes. get to that when yeah. it's time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It is mostly really great up here. Yeah, that's that's what it's sounding like. But yes, this is a good segue. Let's talk about some of the cons, some things that you maybe don't like about the area. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that has been really great about the area and the economy is the growth here and the amount of people migrating. But that's also becoming a con um, because this area wasn't quite prepared for this rate of growth. And so and so the infrastructure is trying to keep up and catch up. Um, the, there's a lot of road construction. Um, there's definitely more traffic than what, uh, what when we initially moved here. Um, and so you have uh, one of the good things also is kind of becoming one a negative at the same time. Um, I think when when the roads can catch up, when the builders can catch up and these, uh, you know, we can start to match the growth, it's all going to level out and be really great. But right now, people are playing catch up here. And mm-hmm. so um, and, and trying to keep up with exponential growth um, that really no other part of the country has seen. It's like we knew people would move here, but we didn't think this many would move and this fast. Like it all just it was like the floodgates open yeah. uh, in 2020. It had been progressively growing like 2010 to 2020. Um, it, it grew a ton up here, 
but it's definitely not just farmland and, and mountains anymore. Um, right, right. There's still quite a bit of farmland. There's a, there's a lot of areas being bought up by by land developers. Um, there's a lot of public land and, and, and state parks and a lot of um, just, you know, kind of untouched nature that people have access to not far away. So that's still a big draw, but there's just a concentrated amount of people, uh, especially around the Meridian area. And so that's also affected how home builders are building their properties. You know, there used to be a lot, a lot more small acreage lots, um, you know, a home, and then you got a, a big yard and a lot of land around it. And there's certainly still that option. It's just coming at a much higher price tag now. So these builders are building subdivisions and communities and they're kind of, you know, the lot sizes are quite a bit smaller than people might like. So, you know, it's like we're trying to make space for people to live and, you know, you can only, you know, you can only have so much at the, with how many people are here. You can't have everybody living on a one or two acre lot, you know, in a big old house too. So, so we're trying to keep up with, with uh, the demand for housing. We're trying to raise the amount of uh, apartments and townhomes that are being produced. Um, that's a, a lot in what's happening in Central Meridian uh, around the village area and, and more densely populated areas. So the builders have their hands full for sure. Um, so if there is a con, uh, it's, it's that the growth, we're trying to keep up with the growth at this point. And that equates to a little more traffic here, especially during commute time, and then uh, a little bit smaller lot sizes. But overall, you know, I, I definitely think the good outweighs uh, some of these challenges we're facing right now. Yeah, no, abs absolutely. Yeah, that's it's like uh, growing pains that just naturally happen when when uh, tons of people decide to move to a certain area. Yeah. Um, I, well, I like you're five feet tall and you're growing to six feet in you know six months type of thing yeah yeah Whew. that'll be yeah a lot of uh a lot of nights of just growing pains but uh yeah you know i i had shout out to i know this family the bills they moved up there i think 2017 18 19 type of deal and so you know they've they've been up there for a while they love it they come visit california on occasion and we yeah. see we see them from time to time and um, but so far, I mean, the whole family left, they all, one of them moved and then the other one and then the other one and then the other yeah. one. And we're just like, Oh, they all live in Idaho now. Like, cool. Uh, <laughs> how's the family? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of how it works. It's, there's a domino effect. And what happens is the first family that goes, that was my family. Um, usually once people visit here, they're like, Oh, I think I could live here. I think I'm, I want to move there too. And so we're still working on, there's a few more hard-headed parts of the family that are a little more, you know, happy where they are, but, um, and that's fine. I want them to be happy, yeah, yeah. but, um, you know, if, if you are, um, people have their own reasons for moving everybody, you know, yes. it might be, it might be the same reason for some people, but others have other reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, my parents followed, um, about a year later and we're working on the rest of the clan, but it's okay. Um, uh, it'll all happen when it's meant to. And if it's meant to, yes. but, um, that's usually what happens is when people visit here, it, it's a big perspective shift. Mm. Um, and, and they kind of see what the hype is about. And that's been a big thing is that the word got out about this area. And, and when it did, uh, people came here in, uh, in big numbers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys make sure to go visit for, yeah, check it out. But, or if you don't want to have your mind shattered and, or yeah, or maybe not, if you don't want to move, um, <laughs> you might want to move after you visit. Um, well, that's the thing is people don't want, like, we're good. I mean, we can have more people here, but, um, <laughs> but that's, that is one thing that Idahoans are like, we can't contain this rate of growth. They're like, you know, just slow it down a little bit, you know, let us catch up. Got it. But Hey, if you want to move here, I can help you. Yes. And that's exactly it. So your information, yes, Jordan's information will be up top down below. And uh, what's the best way to get in contact with you, Jordan? Yeah, just text me or call me. Um, I, I respond to text pretty quick. 208-565-2070. Uh, if you prefer email, you can reach me at jordan at greenlightidaho.com. And that's my website as well, greenlightidaho.com. Awesome. So yeah, if you search me on Instagram, just my name, Jordan Wittenberg, and uh, you can reach out any of those ways is fine. And uh, I can help you find what you're looking for or just tell you more about the area because really we covered a lot of the main stuff. 
but there's there's a lot so um more. there's still a lot there's still a lot i have a yeah i got a lot written down but there's a quite a bit about this area and like you said brian you got to really get up here and see it in person i think is is always a uh, good advice and get a feel for the area 100 percent. yeah thank you thank you for giving us uh, a little bit of tour of, of the area we really appreciate it Thank you.